In these slides, we are going to present the evidence exploring the harms and benefits of drug treatment for glycemic control and type 2 diabetes. The vast majority of such evidence is contained in four large trials. There were two general groups of patients studied. One, younger, fairly healthy patients with new onset diabetes, and two, older patients with a duration of diabetes of about 10 years who already had some complications of diabetes. Important points to remember are, one, we have to extrapolate from these trial data to individual patients who are similar to those in the trials. Two, we do not have trial data for all types of patients. You will have to use your judgment to extrapolate advice for many patients. Three, ultimately treatment choices should be by patients for patients with our expert guidance and support. The United Kingdom Prospective Diabetes Study was a series of trials and two of them are germane to our conversation. UK PDS 33 studied younger patients, average age 53, with new onset diabetes. It compared diet and lifestyle changes with drug treatment using insulin or sulfonylureas. This is often called tight control when the study is being referred to, but that likely does not mean the same thing we think of as tight control decades later. Basically, this trial asked, is using drugs to lower glucose better for patients than a non-drug-based approach? We will show you the data from these trials in a standard format. Reading left to right, you will find the patient outcome being studied, the event rate in the control arm, the event rate in the intervention arm, the difference between those two, called the absolute risk reduction or absolute risk increase in situations where the intervention causes harms, the relative risk reduction or increase, and finally the number needed to treat or harm. This is a way of presenting information to us and patients that will tell us how many patients would need to be treated to result in one good or bad outcome. These are reported only if they are statistically significant. Green indicates an advantage for the patient and red indicates harm. In this slide, we see that there was no proven reduction in mortality, stroke, heart attack, blindness, amputation, or total diabetes-related outcomes. We see a 2.4% improvement in microvascular outcomes and would need to treat 42 patients for the study duration, 10 years, for one patient to benefit. UKPDS 34 compared metformin to conventional treatment in a subset of patients who were overweight and the average BMI was 31. Metformin resulted in a fairly dramatic reduction in heart attacks, overall mortality, and any diabetes-related endpoint. Only 14 patients needed to be treated with metformin for 10 years to save a life. There's no study before or after this one which has such a dramatic proven effect. Note also that while metformin showed a significant reduction in any diabetes-related endpoint, UK PDS with insulin and sulfonylureas did not. Additional follow-up of UK PDS was published in 2008 and gives us more information on microvascular outcomes. It's important to note that these do not appear to be related to the A1C. That is, differences in A1C between control and intervention groups were lost within the first year after the original study ended. Ten years after the original UK PDS 33 trial ended, we see modest improvements in absolute risk reduction in a number of important outcomes. Remember that though many may interpret this to mean that tight control is proven, it is only proof that using insulin or sulfonylureas for 10 years had benefit. These patients were not treated to A1C targets of less than 7, which is often what tight control means to many today.
Ten years after the original UK PDS 34 trial ended, we sus see sustained improvement in overall mortality. We will now review the three trials that are more recent and which attempted to study tight versus moderate control of glycemia. They used a variety of commonly available medications and remember that these patients differ from those in UK PDS because they are older, ages 60 to 65, and already have a significant number of complications. Accord compared treating to an A1C of 7 to 8 versus treating to very low A1Cs of less than 6. You will notice a recurring theme. Most of the outcome measures show no difference in things that matter to patients. What is clear and worrisome is that while there was a small reduction in non-fatal MI, overall cardiovascular mortality was increased and overall mortality was increased. Treating 95 patients with tight control resulted in one death amongst those being treated aggressively. There is speculation that this may have been due to the much greater rate of severe hypoglycemia in those patients, a 7% absolute risk increase. Proponents of tight control point to reductions in microvascular events in Accord. Here we show you those absolute numbers. Please note that while outcomes like urinary protein, light touch sensation, and visual acuity metrics improved, there was no difference in end-stage renal disease, amputation, or blindness. The ADVANCE trial is the second trial of tight control in older, sicker patients, and like Accord was published in 2008. Data is strikingly similar to Accord. More hypoglycemia and no difference in things like stroke, dialysis, or blindness. In advance, like Accord, there was no reduction in overall mortality, but at least it was no worse. Finally, we look at our own VADT, which studied patients similar to those we see every day. Like Accord in advance, these were patients who were older and already had complications of diabetes and vascular disease. This data is really quite easy to understand. The only difference between patients treated intensively compared to those treated conservatively was that the former group had a lot more hypoglycemia. For every 18 patients treated aggressively, one had a serious hypoglycemic event. We hope this evidence is helpful to you as you try to explain to veterans the absolute benefits and harms of treatment options with respect to glycemic control and that it helps you participate in a shared decision with them about their A1C goal.